Welcome everybody to uh, Lancashire County Cricket Club. Uh, for, for those who don't know, um, I used to sit just over there on the grass when I was 50, uh, when I was five years old, through 10 years old, through 15 years old, and watch cricket with my brother. We used to bring our packed lunch and sit down and watch Lancashire in those days and England in those days when they were at the top of their game. Um, I think England's not quite there um, at the top of their game at the moment, but for me it brings back fantastic memories just to see the changes. And, and this is a place that is a, a good evidence point for the changes that Manchester's had in that last 25, 30 years. Growing up from uh, the kind of dark satanic mills of uh, an industrial city to a modern um, uh, go-getting collaborative city that now has a worldwide reputation for good things rather than just things that happened in the 19th century, the Industrial Revolution uh, and, and all those other things. Um, so I'm going to talk to you for about 10 minutes or so uh, and I've got a number of things I want to cover but I, I think that the interesting parts are going to be in, in the following half hour after that when you start to, to get some questions. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, two things, devolution and collaboration and I'll, I'll set out some of the challenges that I think we've got as a city region um, uh, moving forward. Um, based on where we are today. But in order to understand those challenges, uh, that's why I want to give you a bit of the history and the why we are where we are, uh, and knowing what we've got in order to understand where the challenges are. Because without understanding that, then we don't know the context for those challenges. So I suspect over the last few days, you've had a bit of information about devolution. You've had a bit of information about Manchester uh, strategy. Um, but the crucial part of our Manchester strategy, which we formed seven years ago, um, unlike other parts, I mean, Manchester is very unique in the UK in its governance arrangements and how it collaborates between the private sector uh, and the public sector. And by the way, when I say private sector, I mean businesses. That, and businesses could be a, a not-for-profit, they're still a business, they just treat their balance sheet in a different way. They could be a social enterprise, they treat their balance sheet in a different way again. Or they could be a, a profit-making SME or large organisation. They are still a business. And when I talk about a public sector, I'm talking about healthcare, local authorities, council people, uh, people who work in the healthcare market, whatever, universities. Uh, and, and that's the two, two broad camps I'll talk about. Um, but in this city region, we've had the business community and the politicians and the public sector working together now closely at the heart of what's driven this city for 15 years, with consistency of leadership in both those sectors for about 15 years or so. The politicians and the, and the civil servants go back much longer than that in terms of their collaboration uh, and their um, longevity of leadership. And that is pretty unique in the UK. I can't think of any other city or region where you've got a leader or a chief executive of a local authority that have been in post now for 20 years, um, with success behind them about a growing economy. There's a couple have been in post for 20 years whose city and region's going uh, down into the doldrums, uh, but not in the growth aspects, and then bringing multiple local authorities together to bear as well. And the reason the private sector was in, uh, asked to get involved uh, 15 years or so ago what was the politicians' recognition that if the strategy for growth uh, needs to happen, um, they don't have the factors of production around a business organisation, the, the understanding of business, to know what will drive a business to grow, and therefore needs collaboration. And so they formed things like Marketing Manchester, their Neighbourhood Investment Company, which the private sector ran for um, the uh, local, local areas in collaboration with the public sector people as well. So collaboration has been at the heart of what we've been doing now for uh, at least 15 years. Um, but dur during that, and during that period, we've had a, a number of successes of um, a huge amount of investment in both our transport infrastructure, in our, uh, the airport, uh, in our cultural and sporting uh, icons. Well, we've only got one sporting icon in this, in this uh, city. You'll have heard about it many times, and it's that way. It's over at Manchester City, uh, not at Manchester United. Uh, you can see I'm, I'm, where I sit on, where I'm a blue or a red. And, uh, actually, we've got two great teams in this city, I must admit that. Um, Manchester City and our reserves. Um, <laughs> so, um, it's right to do, Murray. It is, I totally agree. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but but we've, we've used that icon of... I'm in a very good mood today. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, we, I mean, Jane, we've used our sporting icons like United, who are a worldwide brand, uh, and City now coming back up to help them. But we've used our iconic brands around the world to attract inward investment into the city and to collaborate on an external base as well. 
But, but when you look at, uh, about seven years ago, we had what was called an independent economic review done for Manchester. We got six world-renowned eco economic experts, um, driven by uh, Jim O'Neill, who was um, uh, deputy chairman of Goldman Sachs worldwide, to write an independent report for Manchester that told us what our economic conditions were like, what our strategy should be like, what things will we have to put in place in order to grow our economy. And they wrote to seven reports. They're available on the, on the internet, on the websites. You can download all those. But they wrote seven reports to us. And that's crucial. Because then one, when you get a report written to you, you can't change the report. The report has to be factually correct, but they write it to you, and now you've got to do something with it. And we decided that would form the basis of our, of our, um, our strategy. And our strategy then had two elements to it in simple terms. Economic growth and the reform of public services. And for, for many of the parts of the country, they haven't got the link yet between economic growth and public sector reform, or public service reform. Um, and the reason that those two things are inextricably linked is that if you need your economy to grow, you need um, better skill systems, you need better transport systems, you need good housing, um, you need good healthcare. And a business can't determine those. They're in the hands of the public sector. But if the public sector keeps itself to itself and starts developing skills that are required for the next 20 years without talking to businesses, how do we know they're producing the right skills? Well, we don't. So we have to bring those two together. And the collaboration impact that Manchester did was brought those two things together in our economic strategy for economic growth and public service reform. And that's formed the bedrock of what we've been doing for certainly for the last seven years. But in, in simple terms, in delivering that and looking at it, um, there was a recognition that um, virtually all the funding that we get in Greater Manchester from the public sector, which is about £25 billion uh, or so, um, about 90% of that is not in our control. So uh, if you think about it, the, the UK um, is one of the most centralised public bodies in, in the world. Um, nine, roughly 90% of all public money that is made in Manchester, public money that is spent or drawn up in Manchester, so through taxation, etc., is not under the control of local politicians or local people. I think we're second only to Albania uh, being the most centralised in Europe. So, so we said that that, um, that is not working for us, because if you looked at our unemployment statistics for the last 20 years, they've been roughly plus or minus 5%. 220,000-ish people in Manchester unemployed, despite every government intervention, of which about 70,000 are young people. And despite every one of those government interventions, that number hasn't really changed, certainly not plummeting. Uh, our skill system means that we are, we're not developing the skills for young people because the qualification, entry-level qualification you need to get on a course in Manchester is the same as whether you live in Manchester or in Newcastle in the north or in Cornwall in the south. And it doesn't take account of your local geography and your local starting conditions. So we started putting together uh, over a decade ago now, driven over the last five years uh, into this government, saying that we need to have a devolution of powers to Manchester to be able to spend that money in a way which is appropriate to Manchester businesses and Manchester residents and Manchester vis uh, visitors. But devolution, let's make one thing clear, that devolution is not central government saying to Manchester, here's your money and we'll see you in a year's time or five years' time. This is about co-production of the answers with the public sector in London, as well as the public and private sector uh, here in Greater Manchester. It's about how do you work together to make sure that um, what you are doing and going to do in the next five, ten years uh, will work. The biggest we've got in, in Greater Manchester is our healthcare um, devolution. So the health and social care market for Manchester is now, the strategy for that, the execution of that funding is now being spent by people who make the decisions here in Manchester. And that's some six and a half so billion pounds of money spent here in Manchester. So we can now start thinking about um, getting the right healthcare systems, the right transport mechanisms, the right skill systems, and the right business intervention to make sure our economy grows and we reduce the unemployment rate, we can reduce the uh, ill health rate of our people in Manchester because we've got a particularly unhealthy population. Um, for, for memory, I think life expectancy of some of our males in Manchester is 10 to 15 years less than the average in the UK. Um, so we've got a pretty unhealthy population, so we need to do something about that, uh, and that's what we're going to do. So there's a load going on uh, in both devolution and economic growth and all those things. So what are the challenges? So there's some big challenges. Um, 
The, the, the eyes of the UK, uh, which are green with envy in many cases, are certainly on Manchester at the moment. Which means, that's, that's great, having, having the focus of attention on you is, is great. Um, but as long as you are given the time and space to do what you need to do, and to make mistakes. Because there's no way we're going to get it perfect from day one. Um, absolutely no way. We want to innovate in some areas, which means we want to try things and do things differently um, to make it, make it better. So we need space over a three, five, eight, ten year period to make these changes. And the change, if you think about it, changing the skill system, if you want to change the skill system to get better skills out of, of colleges, you can't do that and get them tomorrow. It's going to take three to five years to see that change coming through into the system. So we need people to kind of keep off our backs for the moment. There are people out there, some naysayers out there, who are constantly in the press saying, oh, Manchester's going to fail. And it's always going to fail, mm -hmm. not have failed. Uh, and the more that happens, the more people will believe it. So we are uh, fully determined behind ourselves to, to keep pushing on with this, with government support. So we need time and space to be able to do things. We need to be open uh, about our plans and activities and consulting with people uh, about it, which is exactly what we're doing. And consultation, by putting plans out there, uh, again, you get people criticising you, saying, well, you don't know what you're doing. If you're asking people what you should do, you don't know what you're doing. And it's always that double-edged sword, but how much do you consult, how much do you tell? But Manchester is, you know, it's where the cooperative movement was born here in Manchester, is a very consultative and collaborative city. And we'll constantly ask people, whether it's a business or organisations, A, uh, what is your view? And B, will you get involved? So don't just tell us what you think the, the right answer should be. Come and get involved uh, in delivering those answers. So we need, so we need time and space to that. Um, the crucial part in, in the health is the healthcare piece. You know, changing that system. There are 35, 40 or so organisations in Greater Manchester, public bodies, who spend that six and a half billion pounds. We need to rearrange that system to be better, more productive for people of Manchester. Uh, and that is going to challenge the NHS at its core, in its thinking. And they are part of our, our um, uh, governance arrangements here in Greater Manchester. So we, so we need them to, and the consultants and the GPs, to be more open-minded about the changes that could happen uh, in, in the healthcare system for the benefit of people, um, not thinking about their organisation and their budgets, um, which means people are going to be challenged into their thinking. Um, and that is a hard one. When you start getting people to say, to say to people, you need to think differently, and you need to be challenged in how you're going to spend your money. If you've got a billion pound budget, most people who've got a billion pound budget are happy with their budget, and they're, they're, they're perfect. Um, and you come along and challenge them, and they'll say, no, I'm, I'm OK, thank you very much. And if you say tomorrow it's going to be half a billion, most people who've got that will be unhappy. Um, so our civil servants in London, um, uh, I mean, how, how do I put this nicely? <laughs> And civil servants in London are going along with this at the moment. Some of them are going along with what I call the treacle layer. You go in there and you start treading water for ages because they just don't want to change in some cases because they are losing, well, they, they think they are losing power because they're losing the size of their budget to Manchester. And we keep arguing with them, you're not. This is about co-production and collaboration. This is about impact that we can have that's beneficial. So we need our politicians to keep trampling with the civil servants. Um, in, in, in doing things differently. Um, we're going to have some local, I think we're going to have some real local challenges though. Um, uh, and go back to the healthcare one, it could work in any, any part, I'll go back to the healthcare one though, is, is one of the challenges I'm putting back to the, like the healthcare group at the moment is that where is your innovation coming from? And at the moment they are kind of restricting their, um, their, their meeting rooms, if you like, to people who are already in their organisations. Mm -hmm who've already been delivering these services for the last 10, 15 years. And, and I'm saying, where's the new innovation and creativity going to come from? Where's that new challenge going to come from? Um, because if you don't, if you have it, any organization I've ever seen, if you try and innovate from within your organization and you don't have open innovation, then you pretty much are going down a dead end at some point. And therefore we need that challenge, and that creativity, that open innovation here in Manchester as well. And I don't think we've got that as good as we can have it yet. Um, and that means that if there's a social enterprise here in Salford that can deliver value to a caring community in a better way than the local authority or the, the GP community, then transfer the budget. Let them get on with it if you can prove that they are much better at delivering that service. It's cheaper, better, and a better outcome. 
Um, and we've got to challenge our, our, both our politicians and our groupings, therefore, to think about that and have, the, have the, the, the foresight and the fortitude to actually do it as well and to move money away to let, let those who deliver best deliver the best, whether they are a social enterprise uh, or a business uh, or a public body. It, it shouldn't matter as long as you put the right governance arrangements around them and the right challenge and the right scrutiny. So there's a, there's a lot of challenges going on. Most of it, I think, is in people's heads um, where the challenge is about changing people because this, um, in, in Greater Manchester, the devolution stuff is going on and the challenges of the future are about changing people's hearts and minds for the better.